So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the learner index of monopoly power. And I think this is a very uh, important topic when it comes to trying to quantify how a monopoly actually sort of behaves. So in the last video, we derived a form uh, from the marginal cost and the marginal revenue. And the form looked something like this. So that's PQ minus MCQ all over uh, PQ is equal to 1 over the price elasticity, okay? And that form here, okay, uh, is known as our learner index, okay? Our learner index. And the learner index is an index of monopoly power, which was created by ABBA Learner. And it's essentially a measure of a firm's monopoly power in terms of the extent, okay, the extent to which the firm, okay, to which the profit maximizing firm uh, would set its price a higher or lower than marginal cost. Now, again, let me repeat, okay, it's a measure of a firm's monop monopoly power in terms of the extent to which the profit maximizing price or the price it chooses to set, whatever that price is, would exceed marginal cost or in some cases you know be lower or whatever okay but in general of course it's a monopoly so it should exceed uh, marginal cost and this term here that we have here okay is what we know as a firm's okay we refer this as a firm's okay a firm's markup okay so this is a firm's essentially something like a markup cost okay now a few things, a few insights uh, that ABBA Learner uh, kind of determined, okay? First is that the index generally runs between uh, 0 and 1, okay? And then what we notice is the higher the number, okay, the greater, okay, the monopoly power of the firm, okay, power. Uh, and essentially, with higher monopoly power, the firm is able okay, to set a price above marginal cost. The greater the power the firm has to set price above okay, marginal cost. Now, I want you to sort of zero in on this. Okay? Uh, we have the term here, so that's PQ minus MCQ all over uh, PQ. So, uh, if a firm... Okay, uh, remember the firm has control over price okay and essentially okay if it has a lot of monopoly power then it can increase this it can increase this one this price such that the difference between this uh, this pq and this mcq is increasingly positive and the higher that difference is you'll notice is the higher the value of this entire index value and the closer it is, will the closer it is uh, to one. Okay, so um, when we have an index equal to one, then that's pure, uh, very pure monopoly. If it's equal to zero, then it's a perfectly competitive market. I'll illustrate that. So remember, if you recall, okay, if you recall, okay. So this is actually a second realization. If you recall, in a perfectly competitive market, the condition of uh, essentially optimality was p is equal to mc and if p is equal to mc in this case okay so remember our equation is this one above minus mcq over pq if p is equal to mc then this term here if we subtracted them that would be equal to zero over pq and then we would have a value of the learner index being equal to zero and that's another case, uh, and it's a special case of the learner index. And it's the case where a profit maximizing perfectly competitive firm will, of course, choose this optimal combination that price should be equal to marginal cost. And in this case, the value of the learner index would be equal to zero, i.e. no monopoly power because a firm, a perfectly competitive firm, does not have a monopoly power. But of course, if it's above zero, then the firm has some form of monopoly power. The closer it is to one, the greater the amount of monopoly power or market power it has. And then uh, lastly, last consideration okay, is that 
considerable monopoly power, so considerable, considerable monopoly power doesn't necessarily guarantee some things. So considerable monopoly power doesn't, okay, so it doesn't guarantee or it doesn't necessarily imply, okay, high profits, okay. So uh, we might falsely go into the conclusion that the closer the index value is to one, the more profitable the firm is, but that's not necessarily the case because profit, okay, profit depends on average cost relative to price. So say some firm may have more monopoly power than another firm, but earn a lower profit because of the firm's higher average cost. So just keep those uh, things in mind. And uh, that's it for our discussion on the learner index. And I hope that you can see that it's some considerable um, implication of how we can quantify how monopolies sort of behave. So thank you for your attention.